let's try this again. Um, I'm saying that because I've already recorded this video. And then when I went home, realized that something happened with the microphone that it stopped recording literally two seconds in. So as soon as I pressed record, it got the first like two seconds and then just stopped. Um, it kind of glitched out. So I went on this 25 minute rant for no reason, basically. Um, really pissed me off. Um, last time I recorded this video, I was in a super good mood because I had just gotten good news. And it was like 70 and sunny. Now it's 50 and raining. So it's a little chilly. But yeah, it's Christmas Eve, the day this is getting uploaded. So Merry Christmas if you celebrate that. Happy holidays. I'm sure it's going to be a lot colder when you're watching this, but at least I can record right now. So this is going to be take two. Hopefully the mic records this time, otherwise I'm going to drink my pain away tonight. <coughs> Not really, but I'll be pretty upset. Um, I have brand new tires on too. <coughs> I don't know if you can see it right now. But yeah, I finally got that taken care of, so I actually have traction on the road, which is nice. But what I talked about was all of the bikes I personally have owned, not rode, but owned, and my opinion on them, on the bikes, the brand, and just my overall thoughts. Um, but what I'm gonna do is start with like my R3, which is the very first bike I owned, <coughs> and go the whole way to my Ninja 650, which is the most recent one. But um, I've rode more than that. Like there's a few bikes I've rode, but I didn't talk about them and I'm not going to talk about them because I didn't own them and in my opinion like if I just rode them one time I don't think that's enough to really <laughs> sorry this cold isn't going to help my cough I'm going to try my best um, yeah I'm already shivering geez. but like I was saying I feel like if I just rode it one time that's not really enough to give like a get my opinion on it besides doing a review video which I've already done for some of those bikes um, so I'm only going to talk about the ones I personally have owned <laughs> and rode multiple times but like I said I started on an R3 I believe it was a 2015 and I absolutely loved it um, I've had DMs and stuff where people ask me what bike they should start on. I always recommend an R3 personally. Um, unless you like naked bikes, then I'll go with like an M203. But if you like the sport bikes, definitely suggest an R3. Um, I'd say really anything up to like a CBR 500. I wouldn't go above that if you have no riding experience. But my personal favorite is R3. There's some bias there, of course, because I started on one. My best friend started on one too. He, as far as I know, he really liked his. I loved mine. My only complaint with it was it was too quiet. Um, which stock bikes typically are quiet. This one had a stock exhaust. Uh, I ended up just taking the muffler off to make it a little bit louder, which helps out. But it was still overall pretty quiet. But it was a very fun bike. Um, it was definitely good to learn on. It took, I don't want to say like took a beating because I didn't do anything that stupid with it, but I like I learned on it. So I sawed out a good bit. Um, I probably fell over like two or three times total. But like I learned on it and it handled it perfectly fine. I didn't have any major issues with it at all. Like it, it worked well and obviously not the fastest but it's a 300 so we're not really going to be <laughs> talking about speed because <laughs> that's not what you would expect it is now out of the 300 like class it is one of the fastest because it's technically 320 cc um so it has 20 extra i think the ninja 300 is only 299 um and i think my cbr 300 was like 289 or something 
something. But out of the 300s, it's one of the fastest. And I was able to hit 117 on it, which I can do that now in like six seconds. But um, anyway, sorry, I keep saying no. I'm trying to keep a train of thought going here. But that's sad. But yeah, I loved it. I had no real problems with it. <laughs> Try not to cough. My only complaint was that it was too quiet. But it was a great beginner bike until I totaled it by driving into a truck because I'm stupid. I hope the camera picked that up. That was cool. But yeah, a lot of it. Sorry. And like I said, drove it into a truck just about head on. Um, got fucked up pretty bad. So, I wasn't able to walk for a few months. Obviously, no riding during that time. And then, I ended up not riding for about three years. I think it took me. Because I had a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, I had to heal. I started college. I had military. Um, so, like, a lot of stuff was happening. And it just ended up not or anything and I didn't get to ride again for another three years <laughs> which was when I bought my CBR 300 that bike was also really good um, it's Honda so it's durable Hondas are known for being durable and able to get beat up pretty well that is no exception I was pretty bad with bike maintenance at the time and it's still slow that's that was my biggest problem with it like I said I think it was 289 cc I don't know I'll have to look it up but it was very slow I got it to break 100 one time and that's because I was on a highway fully tucked in and going down a long hill and I was trying my best to get it to go fast because my at the time fiance was hanging out with her baby dad Anyways, so that's why I was trying to get it to go fast. That was the only time I got to break 100. Any other time, <laughs> no. So like that one is extremely slow, but it's a great starter bike. It was very comfortable. Um, I remember that one specifically, you were pretty upright. Or like there wasn't any like leaning over or anything. I was pretty upright. So it was comfortable. But like I said, Why is my GoPro not lit up? Are you serious? My GoPro says no SD. When there very much is an SD card in it. Okay, uh, I'm really mad now. This is the second time I'm recording this video and it's not working again. Well, I gotta find somewhere to pull over and try to fix this. Okay, so... I had to turn my GoPro off. Double check, there is an SD card in there, like I said. Um, when I turned it back on, it said repairing your file. And then it said file repaired, so... Maybe it still recorded the video? While I was talking? I really hope so. But now I had to restart my whole setup. So this is basically going to be two parts, but one video. Anyways... Hopefully it's still recorded that whole time, or at least that's what I meant by like preparing your file. Hopefully it captured the video. I don't even know, but my hands are like extremely pale now because there's no, it's cold. Anyways, <clears throat> I think I was talking about how slow the CVR was and that that was my only problem with it. But like it was, like I said, it was, <coughs> sorry. It was comfortable. <coughs> there was not really any lean to it or anything. So, it was a good bike, great beginner bike. Um, mine was too loud to make videos on because the muffler like fell out of the exhaust. So it didn't, it was too loud to make videos on. But it was a great bike. Uh, not good for running because same person I mentioned earlier I had to run from them on it and I couldn't get away because it was too slow. On this that wouldn't be a problem, but fortunately I didn't have this at the time. So yes, that that 
bike was good. Um, very beginner bike. It's very forgiving. It's like maintenance wise and <laughs> performance wise. So definitely a good bike. Um, but then I got my, it was, I realized how slow it was and stuff. And I had some money so I got my R6 which I absolutely love. Um, it's hard to say like where I have problems with it because in terms of maintenance the guy I bought it from basically lied to me. Um, he didn't really lie but he left a bunch of information out. So I spent an extra thousand dollars immediately because one I was stupid and didn't know how to work on bikes myself yet and so I took it to the dealership. And two, I just had them buy the parts and stuff and then put them in. So it cost me an extra thousand dollars because the guy knew the bike had problems but didn't tell me about it. But besides that, um, I absolutely love the bike. It's very fast. It's, I mean, mine's a little bit faster than normal because I did the sprocket upgrades. So mine's extra fast, but it's a very fast bike. Um, it's very easy to handle and control. It is one of the most respected 600s because just because of like the performance and everything and how good they are. Sorry, I'm like really mad now, I'm, like bothered. So it's hard to keep my thought process. Yeah, I personally love mine. It's pretty aggressive in terms of leaning forward. Not the most aggressive. I think the Jigsaw was more leaned forward, but <coughs> it was lower to the ground. But yeah, I absolutely love my R6. I don't have any like major problems with it besides maintenance, but this is also an 18 year old bike. So obviously there's gonna be more maintenance on it, I think. But I do love it. It felt a little bit more aggressive than the R6 in terms of seating position. It was definitely lower to the ground and it felt like I was leaned a little bit more forward. But it was still fun to ride. I think Jigsters have a more like deeper sound to them than <laughs> the other bikes like you know, Kawasaki. I think they have a more like distinct sound that's kind of deeper. Which can sound good like I don't I don't mind it it's not my favorite but like it does sound good and that one definitely did it was fun uh, besides trying to get it to run 
that part really sucked. But once I was done with that and it was good to go, it was a fun bike. I enjoyed it. But I traded that for my Ninja 650, which I still have. So if any of you want to buy it, it's up for grabs. But yeah, that's a 650. So it's a little bit slower than the 600. It's not as slow as I expected. Um, in terms of like acceleration and stuff, it's still very quick off the line. Like 0 to 60 is still very good on that. It just has a lower top speed. Uh, I think it tops out around 135. So that's kind of disappointing. But in terms of like acceleration and stuff, it's still very fast. I actually did a drag race with it uh, against my R6. And it was winning at first <laughs> a little bit. Granted, that was when I had almost bald tires on my bike and I had brand new ones on. Now they both have pretty much brand new tires on, so it would be a more fair race. But it's a little bit cool to be doing that. But anyways, it's very comfortable. Uh, it's more upright than all the 600s. It's the same, very similar change edition as like a 300, a Ninja 400, or like a 500. Um, so you're more upright, it's more comfortable. I could ride that for hours and not really get sore. Whereas when I rode this for three hours, like my neck and back started to hurt a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but like that, besides it being way too loud, I could ride around for hours. I've done a couple videos while riding that one if you want to check those out. Just out of curiosity. I did a review on it as well. But it's a very comfortable bike. Much faster than I expected. My biggest problem with it is working on it. Uh, for some reason, Kawasaki is much harder to work on than other bikes, I've noticed. Um, I love Kawasaki, they look amazing, they sound good, they perform well too. They're just very difficult to work on for some reason. Like for example, if I want to take these rear sets off of my bike, which I have done, it's easy. I just take out two bolts and unhook like the stuff that they're attached to, like the brakes, and it's, it's off. That's all I have to do. On the Ninja 650, if I want to take the rear sets off, I have to take the entire swing arm off, which, if you don't know, is the little back piece that holds the rear tire. It's that piece that comes back and the tire sits in the middle of it. That's the swing arm. I have to take that entire thing off if I want to get the rear sets off because there's a giant bolt that goes through the middle of the bike that they put through the rear sets. So you have to take that whole thing out, which I think is ridiculous. Just to take that tiny little piece of metal off, you have to take the bike basically in half. Which, like, I don't know why they designed that. I don't know why they designed it that way. But that's how it was, and I think that's insane. It was also a big pain to get like the fairings um, switched out and stuff because it's a weird order you have to do it in, which I didn't enjoy. So like I love Kawasaki a lot, like I love the ZX6R, I love the ZX10R, I love the H2, that's my favorite bike. But they're <coughs> extremely difficult to work on compared to other bikes. That's my biggest problem with Kawasaki, but other than that, I love it. Their bikes perform well, they're fun, they sound good. I really enjoy them. But yeah, that's that's my experience with the bikes I've owned and rode for a little bit. If you want me to talk about bikes I've just rode, <laughs> I can do that too. But I wasn't I didn't want to throw them in with the bikes I've owned too. I feel like that's different. But that's my thoughts on them. That's my experience with those bikes. I hope that helps you if you're trying to figure out which bike you want to pick or um, you're just looking around and don't know which one you want yet. I hope that's, that kind of gives you a little bit more info, a little bit more insight to it. And maybe help you make your choice. And I hope this video actually got recorded. I'm going to pull over right here. I hope it actually recorded and then it'll be like a normal video because like I said, this is my second time recording this one and it went wrong again but I'm hoping this time I can make a video out of it and I'm hoping that video helps you I hope it was like informative 
or entertaining. Trash shop, my hand color, yeah. It's a little, oh, it's a little bit cold. But yeah, I'm gonna end this video here. I'll probably record another one on the way home. I don't know if that one will get uploaded, but I'll at least start recording. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. I appreciate you watching, and I will see you later. Thank you.